Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another Small Engines Questions and Answers for Friday, February 22nd. I've been pretty busy in the last couple of weeks because we've gotten a lot more snow here. So it's made it a bit harder to answer all the questions that you guys send me. It's not that they're not important, it's just sometimes I'm just way too busy to answer them all, plus do all the videos for YouTube. But I appreciate your comments anyways. In my first question today, sometimes people ask me, why is there a lot of play in my snowblower shaft that holds the wheels when I move the handlebars up and down? This one's not too bad, and I'll show you what I did to fix this one. Well, what can cause a lot of play is if your axle bushings are worn out like these ones. As you can see, the center hole is egg-shaped at this point, and that indicates major wear, so the drive shaft will be loose in there. And here's a new bushing that's the same as this one. And you can see that the hole is perfectly round, so the shaft will go in there nice and tight and there won't be any play. And by the way, this is a Murray snowblower. If your snowblower looks like this, it's more than likely the same bushing that will go there. This bushing here is part number 150-1114MA. I'll put a direct link under this video to where you can get one online. And by having new bushings now, when I grab the handlebars and lift the blower up, it's nice and steady. You don't hear it go clink, clink. And also by having the bushings replaced, you are going to prevent wear on other parts inside the transmission of your snowblower. So as part of your maintenance, always check the bushings, grease them or oil them, and it should make them last much longer. Also, if you find play in your handlebars, you may want to make sure that the bolts here are nice and tight or else they're going to feel play when you actually use the snowblower. In my next question, somebody asked me if the Tecumseh motors or engines are popular here in Canada. Well, the answer to that is yes. On most snowblowers that are at least four years old, you will find a Tecumseh engine on them. And here's another snowblower with a Tecumseh engine. At this point here, pretty well five out of ten snowblowers that come in my shop do have a Tecumseh motor on them. And by the way, I've got another engine here on my table. This one's in good working condition. It's actually an 8 horsepower. They're still popular, as I mentioned, but I'm starting to see a bit less of them as time goes by and that you see new snowblowers with Briggs and Stratton engines or a different type of engine from overseas. You can still get a lot of parts for these Tecumseh engines, although you might find that some parts are obsolete now. However, a few weeks ago, a YouTuber commented on one of my videos that some other company is supposed to buy Tecumseh and continue making parts. So that would be a good thing because we can keep our engines running a lot longer. Now, another question I got in regards to Tecumseh snowblower engines is in regards to this key. And people are wondering, what's the key for? And why is there a wire that goes from the key to a terminal? Well, first of all, if you don't want anybody to use your snowblower, you just basically take the key out and they won't be able to start it because it cuts the ignition to the spark plug. Now in regards to the wire, you will see a wire here. One of these wires goes to the key and it attaches to the terminal over here. Now some people are wondering if the wire is disconnected from here or on the older engines it's screwed on to a terminal, will the engine still run? Well, my answer to that is yes, if the wire is disconnected or unscrewed from the terminal on the older engines, it will still run. And here's what I mean by a screw holding the wire on the older Tecumsehs. That's on the orange motor I showed you a few minutes ago. If that's the case, you will no longer be able to shut it off by pulling the key, but you will be able to turn it off by putting the throttle lever all the way down. So that's the answer to that question. I don't recommend you guys disconnecting those wires. Just leave it there, as long as you don't have any problems, just keep everything the way it is. My next question is in regards to recoils, especially when you repair them. A YouTuber saw a repair I did on a generator and he asked me why I didn't do a notch inside the recoil pulley for that specific repair. Well, today I'm going to give you the answer why I didn't do that. Now the notch I'm talking about is a notch like this. Some recoils will actually have a notch that is factory made. The reason for this is that so you can put the rope in the notch and then let it go through different obstacles like this so that you can either loosen the spring or tighten it up. Now in some of my repairs when there isn't a notch 
and that I can't get the rope through, I make my own. Now I had a repair the other day on the generator, I believe, on one of my YouTube videos, and the YouTuber asked me, why didn't I make a notch? Well, here's another recoil, and my answer to that question is because sometimes there is enough space to get the rope through the recoil housing. Like for this recoil, for example, I could pull the rope and run it in between the metal housing and the pulley. So I would not need to make a notch for this recoil, for example. And the generator I fixed, there was sufficient space, and that's why I didn't do one. Now, for example, if I was fixing a recoil like this and the rope was not going in all the way back and it was hanging like this, I would grab a screwdriver, heat it up, and melt a notch here, and then put my rope through it and tighten it up. As you see on this recoil here, there's barely enough space for rope to go through, so this would be an example as to where I would make a notch. Now, on most recoils, the pulley here is made of plastic, so it's easy to do. If the pulley was made of metal, like on some older equipment, it would be a bit harder to make one. So it doesn't mean that if it was made of metal that you would not be able to make a notch. Somebody asked me the other day, why does my chainsaw cut at an angle? Well, the most common problem to this is that your chain is dull, it's not sharpened properly, or your blade is totally worn out. It's very important that you get your chain sharpened properly if you do it by hand, Make sure to give it the same amount of strokes on each tooth. After sharpening it manually a few times, you can take it to a professional to get it properly done. Now if the groove in the blade is worn out, this can make the chain tend to want to go from one side to the other. And even if your chain is sharp, it's going to be very hard to cut straight. If your blade is pretty worn out, just replace it with a new one. If it's not, you might get away by fixing it with a bar dresser. You basically just rub it on the worn parts of the bar, especially down here. This is where it wears the quickest because obviously that's where you're cutting in the wood. And if you do that with the bar dresser, you might be good for a while. So check your chain and make sure that the bar isn't worn out if you cannot cut a straight line through the wood. One YouTuber asked me the other day, is it true that nothing should be touching the auger belts on my snowblower? Well, the answer to that is yes, but only when you're actually blowing snow or if you've got the auger lever down. By the way, I've got the Muskoka painter, he just showed up right now. So uh, he's just gonna help me out with the video. He's gonna push the lever down for the auger and I'm gonna show you guys what it does. So here's the auger belt, there's the auger pulley down there and you can see this arm and the plastic part that goes on the auger pulley. Now this configuration will vary from snowblower to snowblower, but I'm just gonna use this one as an example today. Now Craig's gonna press down the auger lever. You're going to see that part come up from the pulley. And he can do it one more time. So as you can see it's not touching the belts. It would never touch the belts anyway or the belt. Some blowers have two belts for the augers that's why I said that. But you notice as soon as the auger lever is down it's up. When he lets it go it goes back down. What this is for is a safety brake. It makes the auger pulley stop turning much quicker. Now on some other blowers there's actually a metal lever that goes over top the belt on the pulley. It's not in the center here but it does the same thing. Basically the answer to the YouTubers question is that nothing should be touching the belt except when it's not turning. When it's not turning this should be down in this case or if you have a different blower, the lever should be on top of the pulley and the belt. But you don't want anything touching the belt when it's actually in use because it's going to wear out the belt very quickly and burn it out. So some of you guys recognize this guy and a question I've been getting Craig is some people are wondering how come you don't have more videos up? Well Don, I've got some big projects on the go at home and uh... In, at work as well and uh, actually I have some videos uh, that I'll be downloading soon but I haven't had a chance to edit them yet so stay tuned and I'll get to those and I'll be in touch quite soon. Alright guys thanks for watching go check Craig's channel I'll put a link under this video today for that have yourselves a great weekend and I'll see you in two weeks in my next Q&A.